You've probably heard a lot in the news over the last couple of years about implicit bias. Now, this is an idea that really has hit the headlines in response to things like fatal police shootings in the US, where black victims have been shot by white police officers. You might have also heard about this when Jordan Peterson talks about the implicit bias training that he's been resisting at the University of Toronto, when he talks about his opposition to the forced use of gender-neutral pronouns, for example. Let's take a look, though, at what implicit bias actually is. When researchers speak about implicit bias, what they mean is the automatic positive or negative feelings that people have when considering a particular topic. When you think about women, for example, do you instantly associate positive words easier than negative words? What about black people, or children, or even broccoli? Implicit bias is something that we all have. When making decisions and enacting behaviours, we're predominantly led by our intuitive emotional responses, and we spoke about this already in the review about moral foundations theory, which I'll link to below. To measure implicit bias, researchers have come up with a number of tests. The most famous is the implicit association task, which works by sitting you in front of a computer screen and asking you to associate positive and negative words with particular topics and measuring how fast you respond. In the example here, if you were quicker to respond to positive words when they were paired with phrases associated with women than you were negative words, then we can suggest that you have an automatic preference or an implicit bias for women over men. Is there a link between implicit bias and behaviour? Well, probably not to any real extent. In a recent post for the Chronicle of Higher Education, Tom Bartlett highlighted some concerns held by those studying the validity of the IAT measure. In short, they find that there is only a weak relationship between scores on the test and actual discriminatory behaviour. More than that, IAT test scores do tend to change from test to test. In spite of these criticisms, the creators of the IAT still maintain that it is an important tool for examining social problems related to prejudice. After all, if 70% of Americans are moderately biased in favour of white people, as many studies have shown, then this could have quite large effects on race relations at the wider level of society. This approach is generally taken by those on the political left who use such findings on these tests like the IAT to make the case that there are still problems with systemic inequality, such as racism and sexism that are built into our everyday lives and interactions. So how do we make sense of data for, about implicit bias? Well, on one level, it's something that probably has very little effect on people's day-to-day -day interactions. At least, it has no more effect than explicit or overt bias does. However, it may have a role to play in understanding how particular news stories are framed by different media outlets, for example, or how it has some bearing on how you interact with different political viewpoints. Having a particular implicit bias for or against a topic like homosexuality may make you more receptive to particular ideas, such as arguments that are pro or anti-gay marriage, but it doesn't necessarily predict how you would interact with an individual gay person. In short, we know that everybody has some level of implicit bias about most things. Whether this is actually important, though, is an open question. If you found this helpful, then please do subscribe to the channel below, or you can also join the conversation on Twitter at Craig Harper 19 and also on Facebook, so that's uh, facebook.com slash Craig Harper Psychology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.